Hi, welcome back to MEEN 368. Uh, last class, the last piece, we were trying to do the problem of designing of a shaft by using the Excel calculator that uh, I have built. Um, as as I said last class, caveat emptor, this is a this is a calculator uh, in Excel that really does not have many checks and balances to make sure everything is right. But nevertheless, it works if you enter the data correctly. Okay. So what I'm going to show you is how to design a shaft. And we started out, started this out last class, just to get you a quick summary. So we were looking at this problem. We had a belt drive system with a couple of uh, pulleys and gears and things like that. And the original dimension that was given for the shaft in this thing was one and a, one and a quarter inch dia, but it doesn't really have a shaft design. It just shows a straight shaft. And as we talked about, there have to be things like shoulders and things like that so that we can place the shafts in the appropriate location. Okay. We can place the things. So this is the bearing. So just to make sure we know all the technical names for things, this is bearing. This is called a sheave. This is called a sheave. This is another bearing. And, uh, the steps in the shaft are called shoulders because that's where things go and rest. Okay. The first step, what we did was we drew an end view and we found out the tension in the two cables. Um, and it turned out to be 400 and 460 pounds, which we drew there. And then we had to come up with a shaft layout. The idea is I need a shoulder here to make sure that this bearing sits here, same shoulder here. And I need a shoulder here to make sure that I can slide this uh, sheave in there and rest it and a shoulder there. So those are the main things. So there's a shoulder here for this bearing. There's a shoulder there for that bearing. There's a shoulder here for this sheave. There's a shoulder there for that sheave. Okay. Of course, you have to put some clips and things like that to make sure that those things are rested. But those are not the major features. They are the minor features. Okay. So once I have done that, I can then redraw the free body diagram for this by moving all the forces to the shaft. So what happened is this 570 pound force was off axis. I moved it to the axis of the shaft and included the torque because of that. Same way this 460 pounds was off axis. I moved it to the axis of the shaft and replaced the torque there. Okay. And we have to figure out how wide these bearings are going to be at this stage since we do not know the bearing design. I'm just going to assume that each bearing is about an inch wide. This is actually not exactly right, but let's just go with that for now. Okay. So one inch, one inch on either side. And then the sheave itself is only one inch wide. This is not really feasible, but I'm just putting some numbers out there. Okay. So what happens is I get a step shaft and I want you to see that there are five regions. Okay. And so there is region number one that's here and I'm going to redraw this so that we can then simultaneously start entering the data. So here is my shaft, uh, step shaft solver program. I'm going to put this thing on top so that we can see there. <coughs> so I'm going to redraw the shaft so that we know what we're talking about. So here is the Y and Z coordinate. Here is the shaft. Okay. Here is the bearing. Okay. Here is the first load 570 and a torque of 1700 CCW. And then somewhere out here is the other one, which is 460 and a torque of 1700 clockwise. And then there's a bearing here. Okay. So in terms of the steps in our shaft, of course, I'm going to draw it kind of exaggerated, but you will see the, you will see the idea. So it comes up here. The first step is there, <coughs> goes up there. Second step, third step, fourth step. That's the end of the shaft and it is symmetric on either side. So just to show you that there are five sections to the shaft, section number one, Section number two, section number three, section number four, section number five. So one, two, 
three, four, five. Okay. Each section, this section goes from zero to one. This section goes from one to ten. This section goes from ten to twenty-eight inches. This section goes from twenty-eight to thirty-nine inches, and this final section is up to forty inches. Okay. Roughly speaking, the external loads are acting here. There's an external load in section two. There's an external load in section four. Where exactly is it in section two? We are going to say it's at a distance of nine inches in section two, and then in section four, it's at a distance of twenty-nine inches. These are our ideas. So now we are ready to do the calculation. So I'm going to set up and look at. uh our our calculator this is the step shaft solver calculator and i'm going to enter so the first thing to do is to pick the units in this case we are using uh, fps units so i'm going to go up here to right so that i've changed it down to inches i'm sorry about that but i changed it down to inches so first thing is i fixed it i i decided that we are going to use inch pounds then length of the shaft is 40 that's called the spam The shaft modulus is the modulus of steel, and as I said, moduli don't doesn't really depend upon the material, uh, upon the kind of steel. Roughly, it will be twenty nine thousand kpsi. Notice everything is in kpsi. The number of sections is five. Why is the number of sections five? Oops, sorry. There, can you see one, two, three, four, five? Okay, for each section, what I need to do. For each section, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go up to five sections there. In fact, you can go twenty, thirty, whatever number of sections. Say section one. So first thing I need to do is enter the end side. Where does section one end at? If you look at this, if you look at this, section one ends at x equal to one. So it's a one inch shaft. So it ends at x equal to one. Section two ends at x equal to ten. Section three ends at x equal to twenty eight. Section four ends at x equal to thirty nine. And section five ends at x equal to forty. So let us see if we can enter this data. So ends at one. This is at ten. This is at twenty eight. This is at thirty nine. This is at forty. Okay. Now I have to pick diameters for each section. What we do is we pick some numbers and then we go and change it. So I'm going to pick for section one diameter is one inch. That's a very tiny shaft, okay? And it's how do I know it's going to be one inch? I don't. What I'm going to do is I if you look at the original figure, I'll show you. If you look at the original figure, it tells you that the shaft diameter is one and a quarter inch, okay? So I'm going to think. Okay, fine. You know what? I need to be in that ballpark at the end. So I'm going to start out with a one-inch shaft, and then I'm going to do the shoulders. We'll end up with a one and a quarter inch. Let's see if it works. Okay. So here we go. So I'm going to put one inch, and then for the first shoulder, this is the shoulder for for me to put in the bearing. And for the first shoulder, I'm going to assume it's 10% more. The the radius of the shaft is 10% more, so it gets 1.1 inch. The next 1.2 inches. Now we, you can see 1.25 was the target for the center, so one and a quarter inch. Then 1.2, sorry, 1.1, one. Okay. There is no force in the y direction. You can see that with our with our calculation here. Can you see that there is no forces in the y direction? There is a force of 570 at nine inches and 460 at 29 inches. So I'm going to go up there. And I'm going to enter this data. So forces, first section, no external force. Yes, there is reaction forces from the bearing, but that is something that the uh, that the calculator will calculate. So we don't have to worry about it. Second section, I have a force which was 570 pounds. Which remember, take a look. The unit says kip. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to write it as 0.57 kip. Section number three, there is no force. Section number four, four hundred and sixty pounds in the opposite direction, so minus point four six. Section number five, zero. No moments, all of them zero. No z moments, all of them zero. Torque. So section number one, there is no torque. 
Section number two, there is a torque of 1700 inch pounds, which turns out to be 1.7 inch kip. That's our unit. So you can see kip inch. So I get 1.7. Section number three, nothing. Section number four, minus 1.7. Okay. So that's, that's our list there. And all of this thing you have to enter. The last thing we do is we say, okay, where are these forces located? Okay, I just said section number two. I don't really care. I can put this zero. Section number two, I have a force at 0.57, sorry, of, of magnitude 0.57 kip at location nine inches. Section number three, no forces. I don't really care what I put there. Section number four, this four, 460 pound force and this 1.7 uh, inch pound uh, inch kip torque is at 29 inches. Section number five, there is no force, so I'm going to put zero and all the others I don't really care. So I can put whatever number I want here. I just put zero there because it's irrelevant. This is the data you have to enter. So you have to know how many sections there are, where do they end, what is your trial diameter for all of this, what are the forces in each section. And by the way, in each section, you're allowed to have only one force and one moment in each on each plane. So if there are multiple forces, you have to break it into more sections. Okay. Torque and where is the force and torque applied? Now that we have all this information, we are ready to do the computation. So uh, we'll try. There you go. I want you to see that I found the reaction forces. Magnitude is uh, 0.3153 kips. 0.2453 two, uh, 2053 kips, one in the left side, one on the right side, 